Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bants. As always, I am your host, The Bants, and it's the beginning of the week once again. It's another Monday, so it's time for our first What's Happening in Fashion this week, so let's just get right into it. And first up, as always, we have our headlines for the day. And our headlines today are actually part of a one-two punch story, I guess you could say. Although the first punch is an unfortunate one, and that is that Chris Van Ash is leaving Dior. Now, Chris had been with Dior for 11 years, which in the fashion industry is pretty much a lifetime nowadays. And he honestly even shelved his own eponymous brand to continue to stay there, which it honestly really sucked because the KVA line was at the time one of the better lines on the market. And although he does still intend to stay within the LVMH conglomerate, they haven't really put him into a new position yet. So for the time being, he's just kind of flying under the radar. So with that said, KVA, Chris, man, fantastic run at Dior. Like it to this day is still one of as far as classical men's wares, like one of the better ones still out there and that couldn't have been done without you so best of luck to you in the future wherever it is that they exactly end up putting you and i hope the best for you right now and take that much needed deserved break because goddamn you've earned it but with that said that brings us to our second headline of the day and that is who is replacing kva at dior and that is none other than kim jones now from a business standpoint, or maybe even just a marketing standpoint, I do think this does make a lot of sense for LVMH. I mean, Kim Jones is Kim Jones. I mean, he had such a strong showing of what he could do at Louis Vuitton. Although, how that will mesh into Dior's kind of feel, vibe, aesthetic, I personally don't see it working out too much. I kind of see this as a grasp at trying to make Dior find a way to compete with Gucci, which Kim Jones can probably do, but how that will actually help the brand long term, hard to say. But at the very least, it'll be interesting. Kim Jones, let's see what you got. I'm very interested to see what comes of this. Also, Hypebeast did a nice little write-up article of this switchover between Kim Jones and Chris Van Ash. And all I gotta say is the people they sat down with in this article, like, man, fuck them. Like, one of the guys actually said that Kim Jones will bring back genuine contemporary luxury to the brand, not this vague idea of luxury that is used to cover for sloppy ideas. I mean, how much of a spit in the fucking face is that the KVA's fucking legacy at Dior? I mean, whoever you are, dude, like, go fuck yourself, seriously. Like, fuck you. And since we are still talking about Kim Jones, I just kind of want to throw in this little side story as well, too. You now can see the entire list of pieces they did in their revitalization, I guess you could say, the Kim Jones Goo collection of his older pieces. And it's pretty hit or miss for me. Yes, in this collection, and once again, it is a pretty big collection, there are some definitely solid pieces here, some definitely wearable pieces here. But at the same time, there are a handful of pieces that have definitely, definitely not aged well. And I mean, that's fashion, I guess. Just because styles come back, aesthetics come back, doesn't mean that the actual pieces themselves come back. And this is just proof of that. However, with the goo pricing here, there's absolutely no reason to complain about anything because you can really get your hands on any of these pieces no matter what your budget is. So at the very least, kudos to them on that. All right, and with that, let's move on to our art stories for the day. And first up, Juxtapose sat down with artist Michael Kagan to show off a couple of his new works as well as an interview. So if you're interested in seeing some of his new pieces or just learning more about his thought process, I would definitely check this out. Then Muse Sese just had his premiere solo exhibit open up in Oakland. So if you haven't seen his works before, I would definitely check some of these images. And if you happen to be in Oakland anytime from now to early April, I would definitely go check that out in person. 
And lastly, Dan Perkins and Joe Ferriso showed off some of their newest pieces from their newest exhibit, which is currently running in NYC. So if you're not familiar with either of those artists and want to see some of their works, I definitely go check that out. And that exhibit is open till the end of March. So if you're in NYC, definitely go check that out as well. All right, and then moving on into fashion, Korean brand Nonagon showed off their newest fall winter 2018 lookbook. And I think it's a pretty good start. For being a relatively still new brand, I believe they've only been around now for a couple years, I think since around like 2014-ish. I definitely have to say that this is a pretty solid lookbook, albeit a little bit more on the boring side, unfortunately. And I know that might sound a little bit harsh, but just hear me out here for a second. There's really only two main design aspects going on in this collection, and that is patchwork and zipper aesthetics. But even with just those two aesthetics, they do a very decent job overall. Because usually when you think patchwork, you think like either denim or flannels or a mix of denim and flannels outside of just a handful of people. And they actually didn't just do that. They didn't just leave the mediums to just those. They did it on not just denim, not just flannel, but they used leather as well. They used, you know, polyurethanes like activewear as well. So that was cool at the very least. And even though some of these zipper aesthetics have been done before, the fact that they're implementing them here so nicely, so relatively new on into the brand's creation, very well done. And there are a couple other zipper aesthetics here that I think are genuinely interesting as well too. So even though not necessarily the best showing here from Nanagon, there are definitely some very solid ideas in here and some very solid designs to back them up. And I can only expect them to just do even better in the future. So best of luck to them. I will definitely keep you guys in my eyes from now on. Then Chinatown Market showed off some pieces from their spring 2018 collection and it's just kind of boring, sorry. I still remember the first couple times I saw Chinatown Market wear, and even though people were ragging on it, I personally really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun, I thought it was playful, and as I've said constantly now, I think it felt very streetwear in the old sense that has been missing from pretty much the last decade of streetwear up till now. But as if to just shit on these ideals whatsoever, the brand has become pretty lackluster over the last couple seasons, and this is just more proof of that here. Yes, there are a couple or two solid designs, and I really do like some of the ideas they take here, like with the rhinestones, which is pretty much unheard of in menswear, so I have to at least give them a shout out for that. But overall, aside from that, very lackluster. Just very lackluster. I just don't get it, but then again, maybe that's what happens when Urban Outfitter starts giving you paychecks. Then, as we predicted a little while ago, Disney came together with opening ceremony to show off their newest collaboration, and honestly, I think it's pretty good. Now, even before going into this collaboration, just taking a quick look at some of these pieces, you do really have to understand this is on the more bizarre, the more weird, the more crazy, even the more experimental side of fashion, but it's also exactly what you'd expect opening ceremony to do with the Disney collaboration. Now, obviously, I do feel a couple of the designs here are a little way too out there, even for opening ceremony. Just not super wearable in a day-to-day -day sense, just you know, fashion for the sake of fashion, for the lack of a better term. But aside from that, some of the graphics here, very well done. Some of the patchwork is all right, and I really do have to give it up to them on the knits here. Like, the knits are just out of this world insanely good. Like, just so good. I do have to say, though, it is always nice to see a little bit more of the crazier, more artsy side of when Disney does collaborations because usually they tend to be very boring overall. So props to opening ceremonies here, but if you guys ever do it again, maybe just tone it down just a little. Then Canadian brand Ad Dem showed off their newest capsule collection and honestly, very genuinely surprised by it. 
what starts off as what you would think just another contemporary brand immediately gets blown out of the water by some of the smaller design aesthetics that they start placing on a shit ton of their pieces here. And the nicest thing about these small little design aesthetics that they put on these pieces, even for as full of aesthetics as they are, even for as clustered as they are, they still don't feel oversaturated. They all still feel very nice and very particularly placed and nothing seems out of order, which is really, really not easy to do. Then combining this with a more contemporary, a little bit more Americana vibe on some of the other pieces and you have a really pleasant hybrid of two different fashion styles and added them just bravo guys fantastic capsule collection and please keep this up and lastly the Cirrus showed off their fall winter 2018 collection and as unfortunate as it is i actually think there's too much going on here first off let me just start by saying that i really do enjoy this lookbook overall there are some very interesting design choices, some very interesting aesthetics, and some very inspirational, just different techniques used here that I haven't seen done before. Be it in an aesthetic style, or a patchworking style, or a stitching style, or even like a graphic style. But in turn, there also is the idea of there being too much of a good thing and that's definitely what happens here. Even though this isn't the biggest lookbook I've ever seen, by the end of it, I was just burned out mentally. There's just way too much going on and way too many pieces and it just doesn't feel cohesive due to just so many things going on. It's just too jumbled, which is really too bad because individually, even in an outfit individual style, it's very good overall. So if you are a fashion lover, a design lover, definitely check out this lookbook and this brand, but definitely take it slow because there is way too much going on. All right guys, and with that, let's move on to our articles for the day. And first up, Heddles did a very nice overview and history of the chronograph. So if you're interested in knowing what a chronograph is, what it does, and the history behind it, albeit on the smaller side, I would definitely go check this out. Then Hypebeast did a quick little review slash overview of three of the more relatively new fashion documentaries that have come out, and that is Dior and I about Raph Simmons, Dries about Dries Van Norton, and the upcoming We Margella about Mason Martin Margella. And if you haven't seen these yet, well, nobody has seen Margella yet because it's not out yet. But if you haven't seen the other two yet, I highly recommend them as well. And if you need just a little bit more of a kickstart to get there, I would give this article a read. Then Online Boutique Sense sat down with one of the gods themselves, in this case, Takahiro Miyashita of The Soloist and originally number nine. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about him, I definitely check out this interview. And lastly, and once again, Heddles did a nice another history of this time in the case of Danner Boots. So if you're interested in Danner Boots or maybe just workwear boots in general, I would definitely give this history of a look at as well. All right, guys, and with that, we've reached the end of our first whiff of the week. I hope you guys have enjoyed. And as always, if you want to see some more images and some of the lookbooks I talked about today or want to read any of the articles I discussed, I've linked everything down in the description below. And I also just wanted to give a brief channel update as well, too. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to be out of town on Wednesday, so there won't be a show on Wednesday, but do expect one back up on Friday as per usual. And then going forward from this point on, instead of shooting closer to the 12 minute mark on videos, I'm going to be pushing it to about 15 minutes from now on, so be expecting maybe a 15 plus minute video from now on, three days a week, just because 
I don't know if it's new or if the fashion season is just finally starting to ramp up, but there is just way too much fashion to discuss out there for there to just be three shows a week for the time being. And with that, guys, I just want to thank you, as per always, for watching these videos and supporting the channel. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, or if you just want to talk fashion in general, feel free to hit me up in the comments down below. I'm always willing to talk fashion. And as always, guys, thank you very much. Have a good couple of days. And as always, until next time.